I've just realised. <laughs> I wrote the list on my phone. And I'm using my phone. Start again. <laughs> okay. Go. Hello everyone. Long time no see because I never got around to making all the other videos that I planned to make like how many months ago. So here I am. I'm first making a video about uh, apps and websites and basically just like online resources that I use to study Chinese personally. These are from experience. These are ones that either I've used in the past or I currently used. Currently used? God, I need to go back to school. Currently use. Some of them are paid. Some of them are free. I will kind of tell you that as we go along. There will be no talk of books in this video. If you follow me on Instagram or like know anything about what's going on in the world at the moment, you'll know the coronavirus is kind of in full force. So I'm currently not in China. I came home after my um, Lunar New Year holiday. Instead of flying back to Shanghai, I decided to come home. Second week of February, which is kind of the peak of the uh, issue in China at the time. Schools are closed, so I have no work. So I thought I'll come home, but I didn't go via China, so I couldn't collect any of my textbooks or anything like that. So actually, this is actually a really good time to make this video because I've been relying quite heavily on a lot of these resources whilst I've been here at home. Okay, so first, I'm gonna kind of like chop and change between apps and websites um, because a lot of them kind of cross over. <laughs> A lot of the websites have apps and vice versa, so I'm going to kind of jump all over the place with that. And then at the end, I will talk about TV shows. That's kind of a whole different section. First app slash website that I use primarily is YouTube. I will put the link down below to some um, specific channels that I use. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them because I could probably make a whole video about YouTube channels that I like to watch. Um, so I'll link to some of the best ones that I'm currently using. Um, down below and you can go from there. Okay, so I keep looking down here because I now have my old school uh, list on paper instead of on my phone, which I'm recording on, which is a really stupid idea. Let's talk my least favourite subject. Let's talk about grammar. Not that I hate it. It's fine. I can learn it. I can understand it in the classroom and then I forget how to actually use it so I still speak like a four-year-old. So my go-to resources for grammar in particular are Chinese Grammar Wiki. Honestly, this website is a godsend. It is like the holy grail of all things Chinese grammar. Normally I just search like the grammar structures that I'm confused about. It describes it in really simple English. It always has really good examples and normally quite a lot of examples as well, which is really, really good. If you're specifically looking for like HSK3 grammar, you can, they've got a whole page dedicated to that where they've got all the grammar points that you cover during HSK3 and you can just work your way through those. Whilst we are talking about grammar, I also want to mention, it's a website initially called uh, Ninchanis. It's basically, it's a quite a good website, though so I kind of stopped using it a while ago, but I did used to use it. It's kind of like a story, so you have like your little characters and you go along on a little story with them, which is very good if that's the kind of, um, I want to say real world, but it's based on like, <laughs> these little cat characters, it's not really real world, but you know what I mean, like situational. However, you can also use the app, they also have an app for it, which is how I found out about their grammar app. So. Unfortunately, the app is just called Chinese Grammar, which is not very helpful when I want to tell you how to search for it. But this is what it looks like. Basically just a really good resource, which has all your grammar in one place. And again, you just go in and you find the topic that you're interested in and it breaks it down with examples. And it's just, especially if you're on the go, if you're traveling or you don't have textbooks to hand, it's a really good app to have. Another app that I like to use is Hello Talk. I've used it, actually I've used it for more than three years on and off and when I first started using it I wasn't really studying properly, I was just kind of dabbling. Uh, you basically, you can meet people on there who speak, are native speakers of the language you're learning and you can chat with them and you can kind of arrange to, I don't know, one day speak in Chinese, one day speak in English, blah blah. I had a partner that I would, we would both send 
all of our messages in English and in Chinese. That worked quite well, although it's a little bit time consuming. Um, you can arrange with people all different ways. The only downside with this is you do sometimes get some creeps on there or fake profiles. Um, normally you can weed them out pretty quickly though. Like You can just block and generally they get deleted or removed quite quickly. I would not recommend giving out things like your WeChat or your Line chat or like mobile phone number or anything like that to anyone that asks because you will get people who will just be like, hi, how are you? Can I have your WeChat? And it's like, no, I don't know you. You can post like pictures and messages and have people correct them just generally as a community. That's always quite useful. Um, I do a lot of speaking practice on there. You can just record an audio. But normally if I'm practicing uh, like dialogues from my textbook, I'll just record myself reading them and then have people comment on that. Another one, again, if you have studied any Chinese in any form, you probably have heard about Pleco. Personally, I don't actually use it that often. Um, it is a good app. I have it on my phone. Like it's always there and I use it uh, occasionally if I need to look up like how a character is written or uh, definitions as a good sort of dictionary app if you need it. This one isn't a study app in any way. You probably would have heard of um, TikTok. If you download the Chinese version called Douyin, this is not an actual like studying app in any way, but it is so good for practicing your listening and even your reading because a lot of the videos are subtitled. Also, there's some really stupid, ridiculous videos on there, but they're good fun. You can pick up like some slang terms and things like that. Okay, um, Duolingo. I only recently started using Duolingo and I don't know why it took me so long to get into it, but now I'm into it and I'm obsessed with it. This is great, not just for Chinese, it's got a bunch of languages on there. Um, when you first use it, you can sort of test, do a test and see where you're at. And what I actually do when I use it is I'll have it like split on my screen. So I have Duolingo there and I have a Word document there. And then I just go through, as I work through the levels and the exercises, I just type them out on a Word document. And it's fun, it's very motivational as well, having the like leaderboard and the streaks Definitely, I find very, like, motivational. Even if it's just five minutes a day, and I think that's the whole kind of point of it, really, is even if it's just five minutes, that's still five minutes more than nothing, right? So, next one, one of my favourite apps, especially if you are um, working towards HSK exams, is HSK Online. I'm pretty sure this app is what got me through my HSK 3 with such a good score. Yeah, it's a fantastic app, cannot recommend it enough. You could probably self-study quite well on that. It's very well structured. Next one, again, this is a paid one. If you are looking for lessons, you can try uh, italki. This is like for paid classes. Uh, there are a few free features. You post on the discussion board. You can post like um, diary entries, they're called, I think. Um, and basically have native speakers correct how you've written things. But the main focus of it is for lessons, you can have lessons with a tutor or with an official qualified teacher. Obviously the price varies depending on who you pick, like there's hundreds of Chinese teachers on there. You can specifically message them and say, I would like a class based on, you know, travelling. They'll make PowerPoints for you, they'll send you homework if you want homework. Like, they're really, really good teachers on there. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about YouTube channels but I'm going to just mention this one um, which is Mandarin HQ and last year I signed up to her website the course I signed up for I'll put the actual proper name when I look it up down there <laughs> basically it's like a whole course there's three different levels to it um, and you just basically dive in wherever you want it's a, a listening course really more than anything so what they've done I, don't, I can't even imagine how long it's taken them to put this course together they've basically gone round and recorded each topic within each level. They've recorded six people asking the question and then the same six people, I think, answering the question. And then each one, you have the video one time with no subtitles and then one time with Chinese subtitles and then one time with Chinese and English. And then there's a whole breakdown in a PDF for you as well. This is fantastic because they've gone like all over China. So they have people with all different accents which is fantastic. It's such good practice for tuning your ears into the fact that not everyone speaks the standard uh, accent that you generally learn when you when you study. The last website I'm going to talk about is called Rocket Languages. Now Rocket Languages again have loads of different languages on there. 
Um, but I find that you can find a lot of like basically vocab lists on their website, which are great. I'd say like half of my bookmarked pages on my computer for Chinese vocab are rocket languages pages. You know, they have like weather, hobbies, like all sorts of things like this, which is really good for just learning some vocab. Now, the last thing, TV shows. So obviously we have Chinese dramas. Um, I'm actually, got it. I'm actually not gonna talk about Chinese dramas specifically right now because I could be here literally all day, but I'm not very good at studying with dramas. I find it very difficult to study with a drama. I forget that I'm supposed to be studying. I'm just watching the drama and getting really emotionally involved. So what I am going to talk about is some other TV shows that are not dramas. Now all of these shows I watch on QQ, um, I'll put the link down below. I have a paid subscription to it because it's like 15 RMB a month, which is like less than two quid. However, I don't know if you don't have a Chinese bank account, I don't know if you'll be able to pay for it, but a lot of the stuff is available anyway, even without a subscription. So some shows I'm going to recommend, uh, keep running, if you're into Korean shows, you will know Running Man. This is basically exactly the same, the Chinese equivalent of Running Man. Um, you have the hosts and they do stupid activities and stupid challenges and it's just very funny. They have a lot of celebrity guests come in. This is just basically good uh, for getting you used to natural sounding, um, ooh, the sun is coming towards me, um, natural sounding speech very fast speech normally and also having multiple people speak at the same time because they're all like shouting at each other. And next one, so a show I'd recommend for like maybe lower level people, it's called Dad Where Are We Going? Um, Baba Woman Shinar. Basically there was a lot of controversy about it actually as well a while ago and I think it maybe stopped filming, I can't remember, I should have researched this, but all the old episodes are still online um, and basically it's the dads that take their kids off and do these like trips with them and challenges and stuff like this and the reason it's so good is obviously because <laughs> it's mostly focused around kids so a lot of the dialogue that you hear is either the kids speaking or the parents speaking to the kids so it's generally quite simple vocab quite simple sentence structure so it's great because it's quite simple you can understand a lot more of it so it's really rewarding to watch a show like that because you'll be surprised how much of it you can understand very quickly. Oh, another good thing I should mention about these shows is generally all Chinese shows are subtitled. Like they have the subtitles down in the corner, which is fantastic as a Chinese learner because if you can't understand what people are saying, I mean, for me personally, my listening is not as good as my reading. So if I'm not understanding what people are saying or if they've got a very strong accent, I can just read it. Okay, another one. When I started watching this, I have honestly, it's just so inspirational because this show is entirely hosted by a British guy, but his Chinese is completely fluent. I actually was watching this show when I was with my boyfriend and he wasn't watching the screen. And then I said to him, oh, this like this foreigner's Chinese is amazing. He was like, wait, what? This is a foreigner speaking? Because his Chinese is so good. Um, this show is called Granny Knows Best. Uh, that's the English name. I'll put the Chinese name down below because I've forgotten it. Basically, he goes around um, to mostly rural parts of China and meets with these nai nais, these grandmas, and learns how to cook like a local dish, local to that area, learns how they make certain ingredients and things like this. And then he'll take either that skill or that produce and basically make a western dish in the style of something that he's tried there. More, more importantly his Chinese is really good and it's very clear. Quite a lot of the time you can't understand what the grandmas are saying but like I said it's all subtitled. So they've got very strong accents so again it's just hearing different accents and it's just a really nice show because he goes around to all these rural places and it's just it shows you a bit more of China outside of the cities. This sun is like creeping closer and closer. You can tell how long it's taken me to record this video. <laughs> so this last one I'm gonna mention um, is called Xiao Ge Ge De Cafe Dian. Basically, little brother's coffee shop. And basically it's this group of guys, like 20 something year old guys. They have this little coffee shop that, that was closed completely and they have to go in and they have to learn how to run a coffee shop, make coffee and all this stuff. It's just, it's very cute. It's very sweet if you're interested in coffee or like, I mean, I spend a lot of time in coffee shops, so this is quite a fun one for me to watch. Lots of 
uh, like kind of specific vocab, I guess, to begin with. And yeah, they all speak quite clearly, so it's quite good for, for listening practice. Okay, so I'm sure I've forgotten like six million apps and websites and I'll probably think of a bunch as soon as I end this video. So if I think of any more that I don't primarily use, I'll put them down below. You can check them out. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Just write them in the comment box down there. And also, if you have any recommendations, actually, for other apps or websites that I haven't mentioned that I should use, uh, you can also put those down there. Or you can send them to me on Instagram as well. My Instagram is listlearns. If there's a thing down there, or I don't know where else it'll be. I'm not used to this. I'm not good at this thing yet. So I'm going to end this video now because the sun's about to blind me. And yes, I hope you will have a wonderful day and good luck with your Chinese studies. I hope some of these websites are useful for you. Ciao.